high school, I thought that most people's career path, at least most successful people, was a straight shot. Like they would figure out what they wanted to do sometime in high school or college, and then they would just start on the path and, and eventually arrive at the career that would eventually be theirs. Uh, and what I've learned is my own path, and I think most people's paths are not like that. <laughs> it's more of a, a roundabout um, this way and that way, and then end up where you are. Um, and so what I'd like to do today is share with you a few stories of my own path to get to where I am now. And, um, and, and within those, I've pulled out eight lessons that are emblematic of my own experience that I wish someone had told me earlier, and so I hope that they'll end up being useful to you. So a little background, I grew up in Kansas. Um, in high school, I had never taken a computer science classes. I'm not sure there were any computer science classes in the whole town that I lived in. Um, and, and had no idea that my career would end up being focused in technology. Um, in college, I took my first CS classes, had a really great time learning the, the basics of how to code, but still was not at all clear that my career path would end up being in technology. In fact, my first job out of college still wasn't in the technology field. So uh, it was senior year, I was, I was about to graduate, I had a job offer, I was trying to decide whether or not to take it. It was kind of interesting, but it wasn't really in a field that was a passion of mine. Um, and I was sitting in my dorm room, sort of contemplating, what should I do? Should I take it? Should I not? I looked over in the corner of my dorm room, and there was my Araby. Have you guys, do you guys know Araby? Some people call it a Roby. It's like a Frisbee. It, it's ring-shaped, and it flies really, really far. <laughs> anyway, it's my favorite toy. So I saw it in the corner of my dorm, dorm room, and I thought, what if I could do anything, if all the world's options were available to me, what would I want to do? And I decided that I wanted to work for them. And so I got online and started Googling, and where are these guys, and, and do they have any jobs available? And there were no jobs listed on their website, I found them, but they happened to have their, their office, their headquarters happened to be uh, just down the street. And so I sent them an email and said, I would love nothing more than to work for you guys after school. I know you don't have any jobs posted and you're probably not looking for anyone, but any chance this could work out? And sure enough, it turned into a job and that was my very first job after school. Um, and so lesson number one that I learned is that you can create opportunities for yourself and you don't have to wait for opportunities to come to you. Araby turned out to be a, a a sort of technology job in disguise because they needed their website updated and it was a really terrible website when I arrived and basically anything I did to this website was going to be a vast improvement upon what they had already and so I learned you know some PHP I learned some MySQL I brushed up my HTML and ended up building a new website for them um, and I think that that was important because I was able to do what I was interested in even though the industry that I was technically in sort of the sport toy industry, um, but I found a way to do what I was really excited about nonetheless. Uh, so I went from Araby and started my job at Google that you heard about. Um, I was in product marketing for, for Go at Google for four years, um, so it's really nice to be back here. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, and at Google, lesson number two that I learned is the value of surrounding yourself by really smart, really motivated people. Because at Google, um, some days I loved my job, some days I didn't love my job so much, but the one value that I got out of it that, that was enormous was the people that I met here and the lessons that I learned from them. And that's something I would never, never trade for anything. So I left Google um, and was ready to found my own business. I always wanted to found my own business, and I started Sam Reed's Resumes. It's a little online business. People send, sent me their resumes. I had a lot of experience reading resumes from my job at Google, and so I'd polish it up and, and send their resumes back to them. Um, and what I learned from that experience was I would spend you know, a full week working on my website and, and you know, trying to do what I could to build this business from scratch. I think I expected some form of you know, recognition that I was making progress, some way of being able to tell that things were moving forward. Um, and what I learned here, lesson number three for me, was that making progress doesn't always feel like making progress. 
you know, I think when you're in school or even when you're in a job, you know, and there are other people around to, t to say, hey, you're doing a great job, you're getting there, you know, yes, this homework assignment is turned in, done, progress has been made. Um, it's a very different feeling than when you're working in a startup and you're working and working and working and, and you know, maybe you talk to a customer today and learn some things about your industry today, but it's much harder to measure when progress has been made. Um, and, and that's just something that it's important to know and recognize and plow forward anyway. So, um, finished Sam Reed's resumes, worked at Gnip, a startup in Boulder, Colorado, for about a year and a half in marketing, um, and then moved back to Silicon Valley with the goal of starting my own technology startup. Sam Reed's resumes was a great experience. I founded a business, but it wasn't a technology startup. <laughs> it was it was just a basic website, um, and this was just a few months ago. And so, so diving in on the things I've learned in the last few months. So I started with this this list. I had about maybe a hundred different ideas of possible businesses that I might like to start, uh, and they spanned every industry you can imagine. And I spent a couple months just staring at my list and thinking, okay, what am I gonna do? How am I ever gonna choose which one from the list is the right one? Um, and I couldn't decide. I, I had no magic you know, crystal ball that was gonna tell me which idea was gonna be successful and which ideas were gonna be terrible. Um, and as a result, for two months, I sat there and didn't start working on any of them. And that's a big mistake. Which brings me to lesson number four, working Working on anything, making a decision, and doing anything is better, and you'll learn more than if you do nothing. <laughs> and so don't be like me, and don't be stilted by indecision, um, but instead just dive in and start working on something and, and, and learn by doing. So uh, eventually, I did select an idea, <laughs> and that's the idea for Task Catch. Um, it's a website, businesses can go post a project that they're interested in. I have a pre-selected, pre-screened network of top tier Ivy League quality individuals so that businesses can know that they're gonna get their work done by super high quality people and they're not gonna have to spend a lot of time hunting for those people and recruiting or things like that. It's a very easy process for them. Um, so I'm just a few months in. Uh, when I first started working in this idea, I realized that I need a website. You know, I have some experience in HTML, CSS, I took classes in college, I, I built the website for Airby, but it's been a while. And this product was really going to be a technology product. I realized it needed to be built in Ruby on Rails. And I didn't know Ruby on Rails. I had never coded in Ruby on Rails in my life. Um, and that's why I spent the month of November learning Ruby on Rails so that I would be able to build the first iteration of my website. This brings me to lesson number five that I learned, which is that coding is really empowering. The reactions that I would get from people before I started learning Ruby on Rails, and I would tell them about my website idea, and they would say, oh, well, do you have a technical co-founder? And I would say, no, no, I don't. Uh, and they'd say, oh, well, are you technical yourself? And I would tell them, well, my career's mostly been in marketing. And they would say, oh, with an expression on their face that said, good luck with that. Um, but after I learned Ruby on Rails, the, the conversations I had completely changed. And instead of that kind of reaction from people, instead I would get, uh, uh, oh, wow, with an expression of, you really can do this. <laughs> you're serious. This is impressive. And you're on your way. And so, so I found that coding was, was very empowering for me. It built my self-confidence. And it helped me get to my first iteration of my website. So lesson number six, also related to coding, is it's never too late <laughs> to learn something new. I've had many experiences in the past where you know, I'll look at my peers and see that, oh, well, they started learning, whether it's code or, or whatever skill, playing the guitar, whatever it is, um, you know, a full year or a full two years or a full five years before I did. Uh, there's no way I could ever catch up with them. I think it's tempting to get stuck in that mindset but it's just not true. You can change your mind and start learning something new at any point, uh, whether it's code or something else, and, and be just as successful as the next guy. So my business so far. Um, so I, I spent most of November learning Ruby on Rails, and then I spent December 
uh, starting to build my site for my product uh, while simultaneously talking with clients and trying to understand what they need. There's a mistake here, which is that building your site at the same time as learning about the site that you need to build isn't a very good use of time. <laughs> and this is why I think it's so important to be lean is because you know, a lot of time can be wasted if you dive in and start building the product before you really understand your clients and what your customers want. Uh, and so I learned, learned that project the hard way, which brings me to lesson seven, which is going lean saves a lot of time. <laughs> So I look out to, at you guys, and what I see is a bunch of people who are starting to, to um, learn code and you know, who have the potential to be really determined and really hard workers. And I think those are the tools that you need to be successful in a startup. Um, and, and I think if those things are true, then you'll be just like me, <laughs> which is determined to work hard, determined to learn what it takes, um, and give it a go even when it, it, it can feel like it's hard while you're doing it. Um, so lesson number eight, the last sort of thought that I'll leave you guys with, is whenever I get discouraged, I think, oh, I'm not sure. Is this really what I want to be doing? Is all the hard work going to be worth it? Is it worth it to not have people recognizing me and feeling the progress as, as I'm you know, moving along? And, and not having the achievements go <laughs> recognized as they, as they would if I were in a regular job or, or doing something else with my life. I think about, so when I'm 80 and I look back and I see what I've done with my life, what do I want to say and what would I be proud of? And what I really want to be able to say is I founded a business. And I think that's what keeps me going is, is just staying focused on what I'll be proud of in the future. And so I hope that, that for you guys, um, you know, you'll think about that too and make decisions in your life in that way.